Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today for our stress webinar, Keep Calm and Carry On. Many of you might already know me, my name is Cyrus, I'm owner and formulator for Pure Lab Vitamins here in Ottawa. This webinar is meant to provide you with some common sense explanations and tools uh, to help you better deal with stress in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, what we're going to discuss applies to pretty much anyone, seniors, adults and teenagers, but it could also be used in younger kids that are more and more commonly dealing with stress and stress-induced anxiety. And for younger kids we would just use slightly reduced dosages. Uh, stress, stress, stress. Even thinking about stress is stressful. We now have countless studies suggesting that today's global troubles have significant, uh, significantly impacted our daily lives. Not everyone is reacting the same way, but it is, it is clear the pandemic increases mental, emotional and even physical consequences. Uh, you could read up on peri and post-pandemic stress disorder or PPSD. Even magazines like Vogue write about this. And many practitioners are comparing this condition to PTSD. No? And there is FONO, the fear of normal, where people are afraid of re-entering normal life, for example, entering a store or a restaurant. No? The Canadian Mental Health Association, CMHA, fully recognizes this phenomenon and offers all kinds of resources on their website. Another term frequently used is COVID stress syndrome. And now add national, global and individual economic stress and fears, and sprinkle in a bit of fear about wars and other hardships and our local, national and international media and you are handling a very draining cocktail. You know? One more thing to consider is that even elevated levels of stress also have an impact on our digestion and overall immune health. And this means addressing the stress will directly promote digestion and immune function. So today we'll talk stress, anxiety, digestion and measures to improve all of these, but also provide some general guidance on boosting your and your kids' immune system so that you are prepared, protected and gung-ho for hopefully a normal year of work, school and life ahead. So what is stress? The dictionary defines stress as a state of mental and emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. What we call stress today was biochemically an evolutionary mechanism that helped some of our early ancestors to survive. It allowed them to respond much faster to real danger. And this mechanism is known as fight or flight response. The most commonly used example is the hungry bear popping up in front of your cave. And those ancestors that had developed this biochemical adaptation would go through a cascade of hormonal releases in split seconds, allowing them to either fight harder or run faster and longer to survive this acute danger. So some of them did survive, otherwise we wouldn't be here today, and this biochemical adaptation survived with them and became the biochemical standard for all of us today. So this is what happens inside our bodies during such a stress response. First, the body releases the stress hormone cortisol. It makes blood sugar levels and blood pressure rise. This means quick energy and is released and distributed fast throughout the body. Second, and simultaneously, the body releases stress hormones norepinephrine or epinephrine, also known as adrenaline. And this we can feel. It is this electric humming sensation in the pit of our bellies after a shock of some sort. That is adrenaline released into the bloodstream from the adrenal glands located on top of our two kidneys. And these two hormones also increase heart rate, blood pressure and they boost all energy supplies. But adrenaline has a secondary effect. Once in the blood and circulating, it can direct blood flow to the heart, lungs and the big body muscles by widening those arteries supplying blood sugar and oxygen to the heart, lungs and muscles, you know, so that you have a, the strength and resource to either fight or run. You know. Adrenaline pinches off those blood vessels supplying the gastrointestinal tract. Digestive activity practically stops, because in this moment of crisis or danger or shock, digestion is really not essential. 
Uh, survival is essential right now and that blood, sugar and oxygen is better used for the heart, the brain, the lungs and all the muscles. No? Adrenaline also forces serotonin and dopamine levels to drop. These are two neurotransmitters needed for relaxation, feeling good and to support digestion because this too is right now not essential and these neurotransmitters practically counteract adrenaline. You know? So today we no longer live in caves but our brains and bodies are still hardwired as if we did. Bears and tigers that stressed our ancestors once in a while have been replaced with stress, worries and anxiety day and night around the clock. We technically live in a constant fight or flight mode and as discussed in this mode Digestion never gets the attention or blood supply it needs to properly digest, process, absorb and replenish nutrients. Chronic stress causes indigestion and malabsorption. Chronic stress increases our daily requirements of nutrients and enzyme cofactors. Therefore, chronic stress leads directly into nutrient deficiencies, which then further amplifies the effects of next day stress back onto us. We become less able to cope with stress so it all turns into a vicious cycle. We are spreading ourselves thin is a saying that, it, that describes this very well. We have all been on a roller coaster ride over the last 30 months as a result of the pandemic, online learning or working, loss of activities and exercise, loss of social contacts, personal economics, and wars with global consequences. The list goes on and on. Stress management is easier said than done, but it is a very valuable tool and needs to be looked at. When we are stressed, we tend to put our heads down and tense up, breathe shallow, and we are just desperate for it to pass. I believe, I believe we need to do the exact opposite. We have to put our heads up and breathe observe our surroundings and our situation, recognize our stressors and acknowledge them, and then try to remove these stressors if possible, or try to change your attitude towards them. Set your phone reminder app three times or four times a day to remind you to do deep breathing exercises um, or even do brief workplace meditations. No? YouTube is full of them. No? Create a daily schedule it will provide you with a sense of normalcy and accomplishment. Uh, try not to complain, doesn't make you or anyone feel better. Uh, smiling actually does make you feel better. And turn off the news, it can be toxic. Uh, get daily exercise, daily, 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 maybe even twice a day, morning and evening activities. Exercise raises your spirits and endorphin levels. It is undisputed the best remedy against stress. Uh, Surround yourself with positive people as often as possible. It will help. No? But very important, limit your exposure to negative people. Remember, recognize your stressors and remove them if possible. No? Or change your attitude towards them. Spend your time in nature, anywhere outdoors. Pay attention to nature, actually recognize it. No? These are the most common stress management measures and they will make a difference. Okay, so one supplement that truly stands out and has helped me, my family and friends and many of my customers is L-theanine. It is a simple amino acid first found in green tea back in the mid-1950s. It is the calming ingredient in green tea. The average cup of green tea contains just about 8 to 10 milligrams of L-theanine and this makes our 200 milligram slow release capsule equivalent to 20 cups of green tea per capsule. Uh, obviously, we're using clean L-theanine by itself. Uh, there's no caffeine or other residue ingredients of tea contained. Uh, L-theanine has no known toxicity and no contraindications with any prescription drug. It reduces nervousness and restlessness. And when taken uh, during the day, uh, it does not make us uh, sleepy or drowsy in any way. It actually increases focus. You know? It is the perfect daytime stress supplement and its mechanism of action is quite interesting. 
it inhibits the stress hormones epinephrine and norepinephrine while upregulating serotonin, dopamine and GABA, which is exactly the opposite of what stress does to us, which is why some people call it nature's antidote to stress. For teenagers and adults, I would always recommend the 200 mg slow release capsule uh, because they, uh, they provide calming and focus enhancing properties for four to five hours each. Uh, and this can be taken, taken two or three times a day, for example, morning, noon and afternoon uh, to get us through the day. Younger kids could use our 125 mg chewable tablets um, in similar regime. And if sleep is an issue, especially if we wake up in the early morning hours and our brains already revving at high speeds, so-called busy brain syndrome, L-theanine slow release works synergistically with magnesium glycinate and for this application both taken together at bedtime. Fantastic. So, for example, um, you would take one or two L-theanine slow release plus the two or three magnesium glycinates at bedtime. And this gives me a nice lead into magnesium for stress, anxiousness and sleep issues. Magnesium deficiency is rampant in our North American population. And today's kids and teenagers with often fairly limited diets, when it comes to mineral containing foods, they are leading this statistic. Studies have shown magnesium deficiency contributes to numerous mental health problems, including stress, anxiety and insomnia. Magnesium is our calming and relaxing mineral. It regulates the nervous system and helps us cope with stress. Magnesium suppresses the release of stimulating neurotransmitters like epinephrine or norepinephrine. And it also aids in the conversion of tryptophan to 5-HTP, which is the precursor for the production of serotonin and melatonin. No? Most teenagers today have body weights comparable to adults and their activity levels are usually much higher uh, compared to adults. No? So they could certainly use the standard uh, adult magnesium dose of three caps per day. Best given or taken as one capsule in the morning, two capsules at bedtime. No? Younger or lighter kids uh, would use less, for example, just one capsule twice a day. And this will, will help with relaxation, but also energy, muscle metabolism and performance, but also with sleep and anxiousness. Uh, one other group of vitamins that needs to be mentioned in, in this scenario, um, affecting energy production, detox and all levels of metabolism and focus, and those are our B vitamins. Stress depletes us of B vitamins and, and during stress our daily requirements actually go up. But our diet contains less and less B vitamins. Many foods even need to be fortified like cereals or other grain products. B vitamins are water soluble and they flush through us very quickly. Many of you have used a B complex before, you will know um, your urine turns bright yellow within just about 10 minutes of taking a B-complex. This is crazy fast for the tablet or capsule to disintegrate in the stomach, get the Bs absorbed into the blood, circulate throughout the system and as soon as the kidneys register higher levels of B vitamins, they will start flushing them out into the bladder. Uh, all this in just 10 minutes. It's quite amazing. To, to observe. So a regular B-complex maintains blood levels for just about 60 to 90 minutes. Our cells do not get their required supplies later in the day. Pure Lab's bioactive B-complex contains all the Bs in their active form and they're also therapeutically dosed quite, quite significantly. Active form means the body can right away use them without having to metabolize them first into their active form. Plus, our capsules are formulated in a slow release form, you know, providing B vitamin blood levels for four to five hours each capsule. You know. uh, adults and larger teenagers take two caps in the morning and they will still pee yellow when they come home late afternoon 
or early evening. You know? Younger and lighter kids uh, could just use one capsule in the morning. You can actually feel the energizing effects already on day one. It's quite amazing. And then there's vitamin C. And it's always a good idea because humans belong to the small group of mammals. Uh, I think it's just four species that can no longer make their own vitamin C. We lost this ability. You know? um, we lost it at some point during evolution. And this, uh, this group of, of mammals includes us and other primates, bats, guinea pigs, and for some reason the South American capybara. You know? That's it. All other mammals on this planet make their own vitamin C. Furthermore, with more awareness about dietary sugars and carbs, more and more people reduce fruit and fruit juices in their diet. And it becomes questionable if we still meet our vitamin C requirements while on such a diet. Vitamin C is strongly indicated during stress as a water-soluble antioxidant, like a scavenger, as an important aid in our immune defense. And similar to B vitamins, it's water-soluble too and flushes through us very quickly. So a slow-release formulation makes sense here too. Just one 1,000 mg slow-release capsule should cover our average daily requirements. But many practitioners recommend frequent daily dosing of vitamin C 1,000 mg, starting at first sign of a cold or flu but also during any kind of infection or wound healing. We're almost done. Please everyone take a few deep breaths and oxygenate our blood and brain and release some carbon dioxide. No? Stress has a huge effect on how we breathe. And shallow breathing has a huge impact on our systemic pH. No? This is why exercise is so important daily. No? Stress is the most potent acidifier for us. So managing our, your body's acidity, rebalancing your body's acid buffering capacity has a tremendous impact on your ability to cope with stress tomorrow. You can alkaline your system with dietary changes, breathing and other regular daily exercises. But depending on your acute stress levels and the extent of stress exposure over decades, you might want to give your system some help. Alkapure pH is a potent alkalizer. It is calcium free, which is important, and sodium potassium balanced, which is even more important. To start, you would take three capsules twice a day on an empty stomach, minimum one hour after meals, and you could do that for about a month and then cut back to just three caps at bedtime ongoing. If you're interested in learning more about pH balance or alkaline therapy, please check out our webinar section on our website where you will find all of my webinar recordings including good information on pH balance and alkaline therapy. So I hope this information is of value to you. I know this was a lot um, but maybe you should review this webinar uh, one more time. Everyone registered will receive an email with the link to the recording of this webinar in the next couple of days. Um, you can also share this link with others easily. Uh, it'll also go up in the webinar section on our website and our YouTube channel. Um, just enter Pure Lab Vitamins in the YouTube search bar and you see them all. Thank you all for your time and interest in our products and expertise. Uh, I'd also like to thank all our participating retail partners. Uh, that help promote this event. Uh, most of them have specials going on uh, over the next few days in support of this webinar. And I'll now get ready to check if there are any questions. Uh, just give me a moment and stay tuned. If there are any questions, let them rip. <laughs> Nothing right now. Uh, I'll wait maybe another minute. Usually, once the first question is asked, the others, uh, oh, uh, there's the one. Um, there's actually one from Karen here. I never mentioned last names, by the way. How does uh, your vitamin C compare to one with bioflavonoids? Um, mine is pure ascorbic acid. Uh, it is not buffered because I believe that the addition or using ascorbic uh, acid in the 
salt form, either bound to calcium or sodium, uh, can for some be quite detrimental. Um, I believe that um, this old mayor that vitamin C as an ascorbic acid, as an acid would be harsh to the stomach, is completely overrated and un unnecessary. Key in this field is that with a therapeutic dose of vitamin C, if it comes as calcium or sodium salt, you actually ingest large amounts of calcium and or sodium that you currently do not need, especially sodium is question over here. When it comes to bioflavonoids, many manufacturers kind of try to special or to make their products look more special and bioflavonoids, although some of them um, are uh, potentially beneficial within our biochemistry, uh, but just by adding like a, a citrus bioflavonoid, you're not improving the quality of vitamin C. To me, it's really and always uh, most important to provide a clean and, and therapeutically dosed and usable uh, product. But I hope uh, that uh, answers that uh, question from Sonia. Um, is l okay for long-term use in teens? Absolutely. Again, it's it's truly an, an amino acid um, found in, in green tea. There's a couple of other food sources where there's uh, lower amounts uh, present and available, but it's, there's no long-term effect, no uh, getting used to, no addiction, no uh, change of brain chemistry uh, with the use of l in higher doses. Therapeutically, we actually go fairly high. If I can manage, if I can help somebody by using a somewhat higher dosage regime of L-theanine and help them uh, prevent the need for addictive benzodiazepines like Valium, Lorazepam, and the like, then I would consider that a huge success. Also, from my experience, if you help somebody through an acute situation with higher doses of L-theanine, even just knowing that a person dealing with stress-induced anxiety could use some L-theanine is already a lot of... Uh, belief. No? Uh, many naturopaths in my circle uh, use uh, up to 12 to 1500 milligrams per day, which would be in acute stress-induced anxiety situations. Uh, customers would use two capsules three times a day, plus two at bedtime together with the magnesium glycinate to prevent um, busy brain overnight and allow them to sleep better and deeper, which then strengthens them to be capable of dealing with stress better the next day. Well, I hope that answers your question, Sonia. Nice to see you, Sonia, by the way. Uh, Dorothy. Um, I have difficulty swallowing large tablets or pills. Can I get any of these in chuba form? Well, the, the L-theanine comes in a chuba form, uh, 125. So you would take two chewables to be equivalent of a, a 200, 250 milligram capsule. Uh, so you could use two or four, two or three times a day, plus some at bedtime. These uh, chewables are sugar-free and sugar-substitute-free. There's no artificial sweeteners in there either. We only use a pinch of monk fruit powder uh, to help with uh, the tangy taste, and we use natural orange flavor. So they are tangy orange chewable tablets, and you don't have to brush your teeth after because there's no sugar in there. Magnesium comes in pure powder form. Uh, in the bottle is a, a scoop that is uh, a heaping, like a rounded scoop is equivalent to one capsule. So you can use uh, powder in any kind of uh, liquid, um, uh, even just water. You know? But you can also mix into smoothies or um, juices of any kind. Um, vitamin C just recently released, uh, actually just about 10 days ago, is now also available in powder form, pure. We use for all our products... Um, tapioca sourced vitamin C uh, that is unique, uh, fairly rare. Most vitamin C, actually 95% of uh, global vitamin C production is uh, uh, comes or is sourced from corn. Um, there's a small percentage uh, sourced from potato starches and ours is uh, even smaller <laughs> percentage uh, sourced from tapioca. Uh, I could give you the chemical uh, uh, flow chart here to, to uh, just to, to give you maybe an idea, uh, vitamin C is easiest synthesized from sorbitol, which is part of all these um, starchy uh, crops. And, and um, yeah, and the reason why people kind of stay, uh, stay away from corn is that there's a big co controversy about GMO sourced corn. 
I believe there is not much non-GMO corn left in in global nutrient uh, production. Anybody saying they have non-GMO corn, I would uh, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, thanks to Monsanto's, there's a lot of crossbreeding, and I believe you would have to travel into the high Andes to obtain some non-GMO corn in today's world. Uh, potato is a nightshade, uh, and, and for that reason, there's a lot of people with uh, nightshade sensitivities or recommendations not to use any of them. Uh, and so providing a tapioca sourced form uh, might um, nah, is, be, can be of benefit. Um, Tina is asking, hi, Tina. Um, how many slow release before bed? Well, it depends on your stress levels, you could, you could argue. Uh, normally, if, if I'm really, if you're going through a phase where your, your sleep is like brutally interrupted at 3 a.m. practically every day and you're ticking through the to-do list and kind of keep repeating this thought process for a, a couple of hours, um, you could use at least two capsules of slow-release L-theanine at bedtime together with uh, one or two or three magnesiums at bedtime. I, I have one old lady that calls me on a regular basis with... Uh, with the questions and suggestions, she actually keeps a bottle of um, chewable l on her night table. And whenever she still does wake up, she chews two or three as an adult and keeps the chewed slush in the so-called buccal pouch so that the l can absorb right through the mouth mucosa. It takes about two minutes and you're feeling like relaxing uh, effects from that chewable source and you kind of, or she says she rolls over with a smile and falls asleep. Um, I hope that answers your question, Tina. Um, Darlene is asking, ooh. Okay, well, my six-year-old granddaughter uh, has not stopped crying since September 1st with high anxiety about not liking grade one. Oof, uh, she cries at home too. Uh, what can you suggest, please, and thank you. Well, I would certainly involve her in this process. Um, dealing with anxiety is, is no fun, but kind of learning about it is, I think, very, very important. Also learning how a simple supplement can potentially uh, help her because experiencing the help is, uh, and knowing that there is something she could take to help her through a, an acute anxiety uh, uh, situation is hugely valuable. So I would actually on the weekends uh, try out the, the chewables with her. And I would, I would not kind of sprinkle a little bit and see what it does. I would actually go out, all out and give her, uh, even as a six-year-old, two chewables right away at a time when she actually actively feels anxiety. And then kind of let her experience how, how this anxiousness slowly subsides within three, five, ten minutes max. And then she knows, oh, this helps. And she can then hopefully use this uh, somewhat uh, um, independently during school as well when needed. You know? So she could take two, ca two chewables in the morning and have uh, some extra in her lunch pack uh, to be used uh, maybe at lunch to help her through the afternoon. Um, I would op openly talk to her about stress and anxiety. I hope she finds a friend uh, pretty soon so that she can kind of lean on, on somebody a bit more and then just kind of at some point she hopefully will just kind of like uh, starting to like uh, school. Okay. Uh, there's Jenna asking, hi, Jenna, if there's any interactions with Alcapure and beta blockers, which is a group of prescription drugs aiming to lower blood pressure. Beta blockers are uh, also actually anxiety uh, uh, prescription drugs, often used uh, on a managerial level to help um, with public speaking, uh, even though as prescription drugs they do alter um, cardiovascular biochemistry and actually allow blood vessels to become wider. There's no contraindication or interaction with beta blockers and Alcapure. Alcapure contains uh, four ingredients, uh, which are practically the same uh, molecules that our body naturally uses to neutralize acidity. That's sodium and potassium uh, bicarbonate and sodium and potassium phosphate dibasic. Um, these do not interfere with a beta blocker. Um, Robin is asking, how old should your child be to take L-theanine? Again, Robin, I think this is really individual, to be seen individual. If you have a child that is kind of on the verge of re, uh, where the doctor is kind of pushing to use 
um, antidepressants or a other calming uh, prescription drugs, I would most certainly go the natural route first and see whether you can provide a tool that is not uh, as as um, uh, strongly affecting brain chemistry and even potentially being like addictive like benzodiazepines. So if you can help this child even at younger ages, like say three or four or five, uh, with L-theanine chewables, I think you have a winner there. You know? um, but again, it needs to be discussed and needs to be um, decided by the parents, maybe together with a, a doctor or naturopath you know, to kind of have a bit of backup. You know? uh, I know in Ottawa there's, hand, there's loads of um, practitioners, naturopathic practitioners, using a at at younger age children or for younger age children as well. Rachel is saying vitamin C tends to give me headaches. Can you explain this? Well, that's a rare one. Um, I would have a few questions for you. Maybe you want to give me a call tomorrow at the office. Uh, phone numbers on every bottle that I make, and we we would talk. But just in brief. Um, it is, I would, like without knowing anything about you, I would think that you potentially are uh, fairly vitamin C deficient and now you're ingesting one gram, 1,000 milligrams um, in one shot. Uh, there might, that might be activating things within your biochemistry very um, like strongly and then maybe some kind of detox um, starts which would then potentially like not the vitamin c giving you headaches but the 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 reuptake of biochemical or metabolic activity could potentially trigger headaches so one suggestion for you would be to switch to the powder which is slowly coming into all the stores that we deal with and uh, you can also ask for it uh, if it's not in there yet um, and then start with smaller quantities, maybe more frequently throughout the day. Huh? Uh, you could get a kitchen measuring spoon. Like the scoop in the powder is equivalent to one gram. So you could either use uh, a half of that scoop or a quarter of that scoop to kind of ballpark uh, around 250 milligrams per dose and use that two, three times a day and then kind of slowly increase from there. There's no doubt that even your body <laughs> needs vitamin C. We all do. And so you have to maybe just find a way to get it into your system without causing uh, too much grief. Hope that helps. And if you still have further questions, just call the office tomorrow. Um, sorry, I uh, let me see. John, Sonia is asking again. Is it okay to use in teens? Absolutely. I think I uh, answered that question. A grade 12 student, absolutely. And I would, for a grade 12 student, definitely use the slow release capsules and many of them specifically before um, uh, exams and, and, and like high stress events at school or sport. Um, Tina is asking how many of the l 250 milligrams per day would be used or should be used. Uh, the 250s are only slightly uh, higher than the 200 SR. Um, you could use a total of six per day as an adult, uh, like in divided doses, six to seven even. Um, uh, Robin, from a question from Robin, actually from I believe from his uh, wife Maddie. Uh, can you take all your vitamins at one time? Most of them. Can't just generalize that. Um, Alcapure I would take on its own. Can be used together with magnesium. That, that's no problem. Um, Althionine can be used anytime and with anything, with or without food, with or without other supplements. There's no uh, interaction there. Vitamin C can be taken pretty much with anything. There's no interactions with uh, any... Uh, other supplement or other prescription medications either. So yeah, I mean, generally, I always say if uh, if a very complex uh, um, schedule of taking supplements or prescriptions is preventing you from being compliant, I th think it's much better to then just make it as easy as possible and take things together rather than not taking them. Because on the shelf, they don't work. They need to get, they need to get in here. 
I hope that answers your question. Tina is asking, can L-theanine be taken while pregnant or breastfeeding? Oh, it's actually John. So that's the John from St. Catharines. I figured that much. Uh, uh, L-theanine is actually, um, as an amino acid, would pass the blood-brain barrier and would pass the placental barrier as well. But it could also, there's no, no negative effect to be expected in that level of dilution. So if the mother, um, whether she is still pregnant or uh, currently breastfeeding, is having a hard time, I believe that the effects of, of anxiety onto the child are much more pronounced than, than uh, the potential amounts that would pass through placenta or breast milk. Huh? So yes, it can be taken during pregnancy and during breastfeeding. And that, if we're talking about postpartum, for example, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, I think this is most certainly worth a try before uh, other prescription drugs are being uh, used um, in this scenario. Huh? Um, April, is, April is asking, how does my magnesium differ from others? Well, for that, I would need to know what the others are. <laughs> First of all, my dosage as, at 165 allows me to put three capsules per day on my label, which provides you with a total of 495 milligrams of elemental magnesium per day. And that is the highest label dose in, in Canada, at least probably even North America. Uh, most people take more than that anyway. So it, it really doesn't give you any feature. I've used the same source of magnesium glycinate since I heard whispers about this new kind of magnesium back in 2002. Uh, I have had outstanding results with it since in, in while using it for about 15 years in while I was still a compounding pharmacist at a variety of uh, locations in, in Ottawa. Uh, the last 12 years I spent with Desjardins Pharmacy at, uh, in, in the Bywood Market had my own compounding lab there. And I kind of used this, this supplement even long before I started Pure Lab Vitamins as a therapeutic tool in a variety of, of health conditions. So the results I got spoke for themselves. So I know that my product has high quality and high bioavailability, bio that uh, I've heard a lot of feedback that from customers that uh, were used to my product and then on vacation or whatever, for whatever reason, tried a different brand and at equivalent magnesium dosage, they actually got the runs, which to me means that um, the bioavailability of other kinds that they used was not as, as good. Because you have to imagine that the, the laxative effect of magnesium is mostly linked to the unabsorbed portion. So if the, <laughs> if the, Unabsorbed portion is larger, you have more bowel side effects and with that more pronounced looseness of stools. So anyways, between all these little tidbits of information that I gathered over the years, I know I have a good product. You know? So I hope that answers your question. Okay, there's a long question from Tina or John. Uh, by the way, they, they are all good friends from well, 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 in St. Catharines, but it's shout out here. And just to be fair, I also saw um, Wanda from another very good uh, store uh, from uh, Bedford, Nova Scotia, in the lineup here. There she is still. Well, hi, Wanda. Um, so Tina is asking, or John is asking, um, you comment about stress causing digestive issues that may be helped uh, with Athena and raised this question. Can bowel issues such as ulcerative colitis be helped by divided doses of L-theanine throughout the day with uh, appropriate bowel support products like uh, probiotics, um, NAG, etc.? Let me think about this for a second. I believe that anybody dealing with uh, ulcerative colitis knows that during excessive times of stress, their symptoms uh, flare up. So dealing with stress is most certainly of benefit uh, while dealing with such a uh, condition. I believe what you're asking here is whether the um, effects would be more topical, like you're taking a certain amount of L-theanine and it would have a topical effect while traveling through the bowels. I don't think this is uh, happening here. For that, you would use uh, L-glutamine, uh, curcumin, um, 
probiotics and, and all the, the whole regime aiming to reduce inflammation in the bowel and, and with that uh, um, kind of reduce uh, pronounce the, 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 the level of, of state of inflammation in, in the uh, colon. But l works by reducing stress and with that uh, reducing acidity and so forth. One product I would always use for colitis is, uh, is Alcapure. Um, but very important here to use this away from meal times on empty stomach, so that most of the alcapure gets through the stomach unchanged and does its job down down in deeper regions of the bowel and also in the blood. Um, I hope that answers your question, John. Uh, Livia. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, some say vitamin C can cause kidney stones. Uh, why would that be? I have no idea. <laughs> this is really and truly an old mare. There is many observations in mainstream medicine that have kind of glued themselves to the brains. They get repeated all the time, and there is zero scientific evidence of that ever being uh, ha having been the case. Vitamin C does not create or cause kidney stones, uh, even at very, 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 very high doses given intravenously, which I've done and provided for for like almost two decades uh, as a compounding pharmacist. Um, uh, it's always important to, to know what kind of stone somebody is, is forming. And uh, most of them actually would, would respond quite significantly to alkaline therapy by alkalining your blood and lymph and the connective tissues. You're actually uh, creating a much higher likelihood for the stones to dissolve naturally and also but uh, you 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 pr um, pr providing an environment where new stone stone formation is actually uh, reduced. So Alcapure would uh, help for a stone former, and vitamin C, especially at normal doses, we're talking like two three grams a day, uh, is truly not a problem. Uh, Hannah is asking, what was mentioned for sleep? You can always watch the recording. But I can tell you again, taking L-theanine slow release at bedtime helps you kind of wind down and downregulate your stress response, which puts you into a more parasympathetic innervation, which is much more helpful to sleep, fall asleep, and stay asleep. Uh, and I would always combine L-theanine slow release with magnesium glycinate at bedtime. Uh, and Wanda says, always a pleasure, Cyrus. And hi, Sonia, she says as well. That's nice. Um, okay. Darlene is asking, what do you re recommend for head colds? Well, I would start with uh, at least two, three, two, three, uh, sorry, two grams of, of vitamin C to begin with. I would then use it every two to three hours thereafter. I would use um, an old recommendation from my uh, specialty pharma, uh, special pharmacy mom. I would do a so-called inhalation where you can use um, all kinds of teas like chamomile, uh, mint, uh, and put it in a, like pour boiling water into a big bowl with the tea inside. You can also use Vicks uh, in small amounts uh, in this bowl. And then you put a towel over top, put your head under, and gently start to inhale to truly uh, treat the airways, uh, nasal and, and bronchites. That loosens up a lot. I would furthermore use NAC, N acetylcysteine, which is a very fantastic mucolyticum. It actually chops the sulfur bridges within polymucosaccharide, like the phlegm, the mucus molecules, and makes the phlegm less sticky, less viscous, and it actually becomes much easier to blow your nose or cough up any phlegm. NAC in an acute uh, head cold, I would use at least one capsule three times a day. Um, it's also being used to build other components when, within our biochemistry, which is never a disadvantage. And But for the acute head cold, uh, vitamin C, um, NAC, uh, I would always use your baseline vitamin D. I would always use uh, B-complex, which is a foundation product anyways. Um, and then potentially drink lots of hot liquids, fennel tea, chamomile, um, ginger, very good uh, recipes actually. Slice uh, some ginger fresh uh, and boil it with a closed lid 
for 25 minutes and then drink that tea, uh, you'd be quite amazed how that uh, makes your body and airways feel. I uh, hope that answers your question, Darlene. And Livia says, thank you. Oh, and actually John is answering uh, Darlene's question here as well. We actually, I just sent him our COVID protocol, uh, which involves vitamin C, NAC, vitamin D, vitamin B, zinc, and L-theanine. And you can use that during or after your infection. That's absolutely right, John. <laughs> so yeah, we, we actually have um, at least a, a acute and long COVID protocol that we sometimes uh, send out. That was it. That was amazing. I uh, want to thank you all for your time. Everybody's still still present. Um, yeah, uh, I think it was a good session. Always enjoy the Q and A. Um, definitely, once you get the link to the recording and the email, uh, have a look again. Uh, share it with your friends and family. It will go up on our website too. And I believe next month we're talking uh, just because of timing uh, about seasonal affective disorder. I believe that show is scheduled for at some point, same time of the month in October. And Stacey Ann is here saying thank you. Hi, Stacey Ann. Um, ah, more thank yous coming in. Well, thank you for your time and for your interest. Have a great evening. Thank you.